So I preempted my own question. Uh, we have so far this year looked at the surface area of prisms. After prisms, we looked at round things. What are they called again? Cylinders. Cylinders. Very good. And we're moving forward into pyramids today. Okay. Now, put your hand up if when you looked at this shape, you instantly knew. Sorry, instantly knew that there were fourteen faces. Did anyone look at it straight away? I think so. Okay. Neither did I. When I had to check this answer for myself. I sort of redrew it a little bit. There are all these signs at the back that you can't see, and that's quite dangerous because it's easy to miscount. Okay? It's the same thing for all 3D shapes, which is why, just like with the cylinder, I thought it would be handy if you could actually see a pyramid. Okay? Now, it's not a beautiful pyramid, I apologize, but it does the job. Okay? Now, do you remember, when we were looking before at prisms, like say a prism like this, We name these not just prisms, but it's a specific kind of prism. What kind is it? Have a look carefully. Hmm. Now there is a rectangle here. If you work out the surface area, you're going to have to include... Actually, you're going to have to have three rectangles. We don't call it a rectangular prism though. What is it? It's a triangular prism. And it's named that because... Because of what? It's the cross section. Very good. And you can see it all the way through, right? If you have... A loaf of bread that was just shaped. Every slice is going to be a triangle. Prisms are named after their cross sections, but pyramids are named after their bases. Okay? So, I want you to look again at my pyramid. I know it's a bit small, I wanted it bigger, but it was the paper that I had. What kind of a pyramid is this? This particular one is a rectangular prism. Okay, you can sorry pyramid. Keep saying that. You can have square pyramids. You can have uh, triangular pyramids. Any different kind of base that you like. Okay. So we're going to work out the surface area of this thing. The question is, how many sides does this? And we'll do this as an example. How many sides does this rectangular pyramid? How many faces, I should say? How many does it have? It has five faces, right? Now, again, think about it, and you may like to draw your own little rectangular pyramid for yourself in your book so you can see what's going on. You can see it's a rectangular pyramid, so one of the faces is a rectangle. Now, you've then got four more faces since you said there's a total of five. I want you to have a look at them. Can you see them? You can see them on your diagram as well. Are all four of the remaining faces, are they all the same? No, but it's a rectangular. Ah, so they are all triangular, but in this case, because the base you can see, it's got different lengths, up and down. So therefore, the triangles that come from those sides are going to be different. Does that make sense? I do have pairs though. So I'm going to say two pairs of rectangles. Okay. Just like before, when we did the cylinder, I'd like you to draw not just your pyramid, but also a net of your pyramid. And just like before, I'm going to take the scissors to it so that you can see what's going on. And I'd love to have yours again. I'm going to say this a lot throughout the year, and this won't be the last time. If you've got colours, they are useful because a problem well seen is a problem half solved. So if you can look at it more clearly, and understand it in colours will help you with that, unless of course you're colour blind, then you will understand it uh, much more easily. Okay, so you can see I am colour coding my faces here. You can see I've got two green triangles, two blue triangles, and there's my red over there. So wherever you work out the surface area of a pyramid, you have to make sure these all come along for the ride. 